The location of this scene is Town Beach, Port Macquarie in Australia. The photo was taken late in the day and I was attracted to the lovely pinks and mauves in this scene. The only changes I'll make to the composition is the addition of a couple of figures in the foreground. Here is the drawing I'll be using for this painting. The horizon line is about an inch below the centre of the painting. This ensures that the sky will, the, will be the biggest shape. At the same time, I made sure that I left plenty of room at the bottom for the reflections. Notice how narrow is the wedge that represents the ocean. If you make it too wide, it will alter the perspective of the drawing and make it look like the viewer is much closer to the water than what they are in this scene. I'll let that sit there. So let's look at our colors. We've got this sort of blue gray color coming down to this warm pink. So I'm gonna mix that and I'm gonna mix a lot of it. Why? Because we're gonna end up using it anyway when we do the reflections. I'll mix lots of blue and about half as much of the permanent rose. So the blue, we'll just use some cobalt blue. I'm going to dull it by adding just a tiny bit of burnt sienna. And a little bit of the permanent rose. And that's not a bad colour. The colour is right, but I think I'm just going to make it just a little bit stronger in tone. That'll do for that. The pink colour I use is permanent rose. But it's not a pure pink, so it's, I'll add a little bit of the blue to it. You know that's good enough. And then here I'm going to clean up some of this orange, save it for later. Just a weak mix of cat orange that I'll use later when painting the clouds. There's not a lot of white that you can see on these clouds. You can see a bit of white down here and a hint of a white there and there and I'll, I'll try and retain some of that. I'll quickly mix the cloud colours once the rest of the sky is done. I'm just sloshing it on now because I'm going to very quickly turn this over.
we go. I want to bring these clouds further up the paper, as I mentioned before. It's a little bit too pink, a little bit of blue. I'm going to add just a hint of Scarlet Lake in my cat orange just to warm it up a bit and even a little bit of permanent rose as well. I'll run that down to the horizon. And because it's a light tone I have no problem painting through the heads of the figures. Okay, uh, uh, this top part is a little bit too light for my liking, so I'm going to just strengthen my mixture. Add a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit more permanent rose. And we'll just run that down. That'll do just to give me a bit more of a gradation. Right now I'll work on the clouds. Into the leftover blue sky colour I added some permanent rose and cat orange that were already on my brush. And this is just some very weak cad orange up here. Again, using the side of the brush. That's too warm. Still a bit too warm. Go in with some of this pooler colour down below.
these clouds down close to the water. I don't mind them, so but I'm going to go in with thicker paint. And I'm just creating a blue-gray color. And I'm more interested in creating interesting shapes here than getting the colour exactly right. I don't want this to be too circular, so I'm just throwing in some other dark shapes to move the paint around a little bit. Great. And I'm managing the moisture in my brush so I don't end up creating a cauliflower up here. There's a bit too much white, so I'm just filling in some of these. The main thing is you want a graded wash, you want stronger in tone and cooler colours up above, getting warmer and lighter in tone as you come down lower. And then uh, try to leave some, some of these highlights. I've added a lot more highlights obviously than in the photo, but I like this sort of pattern that I've got here. Um, I might just turn this around. All of this has sort of flowed into one mass. I'm going to just Turn that around a little bit, add a little bit of French ultramarine as well. Touch of burnt sienna. I've got to let it sit like this for a little bit, otherwise all these colours are going to flow back down. But I think you get the basic idea. The main thing I did that's different than the photo is obviously I've just changed this shape here and brought the clouds up a little bit more, just so I didn't have a big band of cloudless sky. Um, it, to me it makes it look a bit more interesting.
All right, now I just got to make sure this is dry enough that I can paint over it and get the hard edges I want. If the paper's too wet, I'll get soft edges or worse, cauliflowers. Sometimes I'll paint the, the sand and then the water. There's no hard and fast rule about that, but I think I'll paint the water first, paint the hill and then paint the sand. So the water is a blue, grey, you know, slightly greenish colour. So what have I got that's like that? I've got the leftover from the sky here, which was cobalt blue, a little bit of French ultramarine as well, a um, little bit of pink. And all I'm doing really is just adding some cobalt turquoise to it. Because we all see water as being almost transparent, the temptation is to paint it too light. But if you look at this, the water in the photo here, you can see how it's darker than these dark clouds. That gives you an idea of how, how dark to mix your paint. If we drag the brush across, it's going to be closer to this tone, which is obviously not going to be dark enough for, um, for this painting. So. I will add more turquoise and more of the blue, but it's a grey colour, so it needs a bit of the pink in there, which you'd expect because the the um, sky's got pink in it. Maybe a bit more turquoise. And just a little bit of aureole. So I added a bit of aureole to it, and that gives me a nice grey green colour. I'm going to darken this even more. The figures make it a little bit more complicated. I want lots of foam around the rocks and I'll create that with some quick dry brush strokes. And if you paint in the figure, really don't worry about it. Easy to fix later. Now I'm going to dip my brush in water just to dilute this colour a little bit. Now I'll dip it in again, dilute it even more. even more water. Great.
Now I'll get some darker paint and just at the edge of this leading wave Same with this one here. It's just that little shadow. That'll do. And I can I can play around with some of these shapes later. And now we're going to do these cliff and the trees. So I'll just start by putting together a little bit of burnt sienna, French ultramarine for the rocks. Some of the rocks at, um, at Port Macquarie are more of a reddish, of a reddish colour. I honestly can't remember what these are, so I might add just a little bit of permanent rose to that. And then the hill has more green in it. So I've got this colour I've used for the water. All I'm going to do is add some, some aureole on. But it's a very dull green, so I'm going to add a bit of permanent rose, which is the complement of the green. And I really don't want a lot of. If you if you make this too green, you've got to explain away where where is all this light coming from. That'll do. That'll do. All right, and I'll get my little fan brush. And I'll just start with these Norfolk pines. Just darken some areas of that. But I'm letting some of the sky show through. I'm adding some French ultramarine. I can't afford for these rocks to be too warm otherwise they'll want to jump forward and um, I need them to sort of stay in the distance.
I'm just thickening this paint up for these rocks on the shore just a little bit because they're close, closer. I'm adding some more raw umber and French ultramarine. Just breaking up this leading edge because this cliff face or hill is covered in trees. better. Yeah. And there seems to be some darker shapes here. And I'm just thickening this paint up. And again, it's tone that I'm, wor I'm more worried about. I'm bringing this tree down a little bit. And that one too. And I can do that without creating mud because that area still has a level of shine on it. You can just see that reflection there. And as long as you've got that shine on, whatever you do on the surface will let that paint settle back down. I'm going to paint these figures. All right, let's give them some skin color, just some raw umber. A little bit of Scarlet Lake. Just a little dry brush stroke there, leave it reasonably broken and it'll, it'll give you that impression of motion. That'll do. Too big. I'll have to adjust that edge later.
because I've made their legs different lengths, that gives the impression of walking. So my figures aren't stationary. There we go. That'll do. All right. Now let me do the beach. Which I might just wet the board. This is to keep the paper flat and stop it from sliding around. So the key thing here is, is the reflection. So I've got the wet sand, then the very wet sand with the reflection on it. So what are we reflecting? We're primarily we're reflecting the sky and these trees. So I need to keep this colour and I, and I also need this water colour too because later I need to make some adjustments here. But the wet sand down here is burnt umber. Primarily burnt umber. Let's add more water to it. I need a lot of it. And it's cool, so I'm going to add some cobalt blue. That's pretty, the colour's pretty right, it just needs to be a bit stronger in tone. Again, if you turn this around, you can see, um, and you squint, this, this area, which is a flat, horizontal area, is a little bit lighter in tone than these, um, this hill in the distance. So that tells me what tone I need to mix. And that's probably good enough. And the temptation is to paint this with this and then drop in the reflections, but you can see how much lighter this area is than that, so you can't do that. What I've got to do is effectively mix the sky colours and then just dull that slightly because it'll, it's effect, you know, the reflection of the sky is going to be dulled by the, the wet sand underneath. So let's see what colours we've got here. You can put your photo down and just look at your painting because that is what you're reflecting. So I'm going to mix a blue-grey colour. Um, and I don't need a lot of that because really most of these reflections are going to be in the, the pink band. And that's fine. And here I'm adding some permanent rose with additional water into the remaining colours to create a dull pink colour. And we've got some nice warm colours up here. So what I'm going to do, pick up a bit of this orange. So I'm just going in with this weak cat orange as an underpainting. A 
leave some areas of white paper and that'll read as just some additional foam. Painting around the figures is a bit tricky. And I'm effectively, I'm just mixing these colours on the paper because I've run out of space in my palette. And I'm, there we go. Make sure your reflection is directly below the item you're reflecting. Most of this is going to be green. I have to dull this orange so what I'm going to do I'll pick up some um, just a little bit of burnt umber very weak a little bit of cobalt blue in that this is all very sloshy painting And then we've got these darker clouds, so I'm going to get some French ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna, and some permanent rose. And you'll also see these ripples on the water. And that helps with the illusion of wet sand. So we'll throw a few of those in. There we go. That'll do, and then we've got all this green here. You know, I'm going to bring this down. Let's bring this down to here. Just pick up this green. It's, it's. Um, remember, it's got to be duller than that. So I've just got to aim for a duller colour or something near it. But because this is quite dark, its reflection can be lighter. make that a bit stronger in tone. I'm just going to get some raw umber, French ultramarine. It's better. There. I 
that's good. Again, maybe the odd ripple. And now this sand here. Need some more blue in that. Clean my brush and squeeze all the moisture out and just where the the really wet sand meets the, the just the damp sand quite often you have a lighter patch there so I'm just going to lift some of that out there we go it's not very obvious but it does help delineate where the two meet. Obviously these figures have to have their reflection. darken these legs a bit. very little moisture in my brush this area is just not dark enough I'm going to, I'm going to change that and their legs are just a bit too bright so I'm just going to dull them So what I'm going to do here, I've got the colour and there's no use going back over it with the same strength paint because all that'll do is, um, is it'll just leave it the same tone. Because the new paint will just um, wash what's there away rather than strengthening it. That's better. And by starting here, if I see a problem, I can, I can pull back. But right now I don't see a problem with it. That's better. And, and I'm leaving this with you know, the odd little ripple, just for interest, so it's not just dead flat. And now that makes this look more like wet sand. Just going in with some slightly darker paint here.
I'm just going to drop in a little bit of colour where these rocks are to hint at their reflections. Let me quickly dry this because I'm going to throw in a, a odd little bit of stuff on the wet sand and maybe a couple little rocks and then that'll be done. This just hints at some seaweed or something on the wet sand. And I've got a couple of little marks here that I you know, accidentally dabbed my finger in, so I'm just going to turn them into rocks. And because I've put this colour on that side, I've got to make sure it's distributed throughout other parts of the water. These rocks would have a little bit of a reflection as well. And I think that's it, folks.